Hi, I'm Matt Guy and I'm the founder at Founder Co. And in this video, we're gonna be covering the pros and cons of building a minimum viable product or MVP for your startup with no code tools or specifically with Bubble. So if you're looking to build your first MVP or just trying to get yourself started with just getting something off the ground for your startup, for your software startup particularly, this video is for you. Now, if you don't know what Bubble is, that's okay. Or if you haven't been hearing about this no-code movement, that's okay too. Now, no-code is exactly what it, it, it's exactly what you think it is. No-code is basically you can build software without actually knowing how to code or knowing any true software development. Now, this is really handy if you've never taken any coding classes or if you have no background in it. However, it's really helpful if you have a really great design background or if you have at least the basics of design in your head, um, that can be really helpful for getting you off the ground with it because it is merely meant for if you know UX, UI, um, and really can understand like the user experience and actually make it a great, great designed product. Okay, the first pro of using bubble and no code platforms is that they're really easy to build comparatively if you're just a whip it up with software and they're really cheap to build too. Um, for Bubble, actually you can try it out for completely free. And I think right now it's $30 a month if you want just to get the really, the just the pro membership for just kind of getting off the ground even more. So it's a cheap and effective way and you can get a prototype, an MVP built really quickly and experiment and do those minimum viable experiments really, really quickly to see if you have a good idea or if you're bringing value to your potential customers. The second pro we're gonna cover is that you don't have to be a software developer, which is awesome. For me, particularly, I'm not a software developer, so no code and bubble is awesome for me um, because no code is allows me, I have a little bit of a design experience, a little bit of touch, not much, but a touch. And that allows me to just build something with software. It's really basic and it's functions, but I can do it with bubble um, by just kind of learning the basis of it and how it works, which is awesome. It's particularly, again, if you're not a software developer and you don't have a technical co-founder, using Bubble and taking, you know, getting a course off Udemy or wherever you find these little courses for Bubble um, is a great place to go. The third and last pro we're gonna make for Bubble and the no-code movement is that there is a really strong movement going on and it is growing really, really quickly, um, especially from the past like six to 18 months. Um, it has been really picking up steam. So. Places, you know, Bubble's been growing. They just fundraised not too long ago. Um, and then places like MakerPad are actually growing significantly too and building a community to help build out the, you know, here's what the future of no code looks like and here's how it actually affects the world. Um, and startups particularly, um, as we get going, there's starting to be some consultants called like agencies building around no code. There's a lot of hype and a lot of excitement around it and it's deservingly so. So with that, it thinks it looks like it's here to stay, which is even better for startups. And it's not just gonna be one of those fads that like comes and goes really quickly. Now let's get into the cons or the negatives of why you wouldn't use bubble or no code. Now, one is that the scalability of these platforms is still questionable. One, it coming to cost and two coming for speed. Now, if you're just looking to get a prototype just to see if you can create value for your customers, it's a great option for you. Now, if you're looking to scale up with it, it might not work particularly, especially if you have lower margins or if you don't actually know your unit economics yet. Um, Bubble, if, from a, if you try to scale it out the, like the unit economics a little bit, typically it's on the higher end from what I've been reading, um, I've been seeing from startups or I have been using it um, for scaling up just a touch. And there's not so many startups that have actually scaled with it yet. There are a few, except they really understand the unit economics. So. You have to understand that and see if you can actually build with it. And then two, we've been hearing some issues with speed because these platforms, they are brand new um, in the grand scheme of things. They're, you know, they're just a few years old. So it is an interesting place to be in. And I think the question is, can they build if you have you know a million users on these? Who knows? Like <laughs> no one really knows yet. So they're building up to it. I think they'll get there eventually. However, if you're looking to scale like, tonight, like tomorrow, it's probably not your best option. The second con we're gonna bring up about Bubble and no code is that you do wanna have some design experience or user UX experience if you wanna use Bubble. Now, you don't have to have a ton to get it started. You just wanna have a basic understanding so you know how to lay out things appropriately um, and just be able to mentally and draw things out. Even if you can just like sketch things out, that's great and really understand why you're doing it. 
Um, there are some courses that'll help you think through it, and particularly with Bubble, which is awesome. And we'll put some, we'll put at least one in the in the description here in this video. So you can learn it. I think the biggest, like, if you really want to wrap your head around it, it's like the biggest difference between if you're using some of the Adobe products versus like Canva, where Bubble and these no-code products, they're more like the Adobe products where you have you want to have some experience with it. You can't just like jump into it necessarily with Canva just yet. The third and final point we're going to bring up is that bubble and the no code movement, it's still very, very early stages and there's a lot of kinks and bugs and we're still learning a ton every single day, honestly, um, where this is going. Now, it seems like it's here to stay as it's growing rapidly and it is a really va valuable tool for especially for early stage startups. Now, how it scales again is gonna be the giant question and you know how what do these platforms look like in five to 10 years is a giant question mark, like no one truly knows. So if you're looking to get started, it's a really, again, it's a great place. However, don't necessarily bet on it for you know, running your entire startups just yet. Now it could turn into that potentially, we'll see. Um, except again, you have to be really patient sometimes, especially if you have a little more niche things that you wanna build out. Um, they might not have them necessarily just yet. Or you can, if you can have some coding experience and wanna tie that in, might be a great way to do it. So again, I think overall, the message I want to get across about Bubble and NoCode is that it's great to build MVPs, minimum viable products to really run minor experience, you know, experiments to see if you have a startup or it's just a profitable little tool or just really a really simple software experience that you want to build out really quickly and cost effectively. That's where Bubble and NoCode can be really, really helpful. Now, that's all I have for this video. Now, if you're looking for more content to help build your startup, you can subscribe to our channel below or you can go to our website at founderco.org because our mission is to help founders become as impactful as possible. So we'll see you next week.